Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at the Orange Hill Nature Ranch, Goat Dairy and Organic Farm. It's on these grounds local feta cheese is also produced. The history of this farm dates back 385 years, just around the time the first group of settlers came to Tobago. As the story goes, the Dutch eventually established six large plantations on this island and Orange Hill is one of the first sugar plantations to take root. More details about our location as the show continues. Let's take a look at our stories this week. Speaking up to improve the agricultural sector, the farmers get their say. We've heard from the business sector and youth, now faith-based organizations get their turn. And Kazakh, Frock and Suspenders, Tobago Fashion Weekend is launched. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Search Mariah at 660-0065 or Search Speyside at 660-6096. Search 24-hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Search Pro, the new face of emergency management. Welcome back. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're coming to you from the Orange Hill Nature Ranch, Goat Dairy and Organic Farm. Did you know this entire place is more than 200 acres of land? And here's another interesting fact. This building and the sugar mill were built using rocks. But these weren't any old rocks. This is the material used by ships to provide it with stability. Today the owner of the Orange Hill Nature Ranch lives on top of the ruins of the old factory. But we want to shift our attention from our location to tell you about a move to improve the agricultural sector on this island. It's a strategy that takes into consideration the views of all involved, including our farmers. They got their chance to share their opinions at a meeting in Speyside. The last time we went to a, a, a farmer cultivation to see what's happening there with a, a, a supervisor, an officer from agriculture came to do a demonstration how you could um, spray these things with a, a kind of mist blower spray and it's the most difficult thing because you gotta get the um, hard leaders or, or supervisors to assist some of the concerns are farmers in the east of tobago it's their chance to share their views with the division of agriculture marine affairs marketing and the environment on ways the agricultural industry can be improved farmers need firearms and every time we go to this forum, all we will hear about, well, you can't give firearm because too much crime. And but it's, a, it's a laws for people who have firearm if they use it differently to what it was intended to. It have laws for that. But there are more issues, not being able to get grants or loans from the division. They told us that we had to get uh, 10 fattened sows, 10 breeding sows, in order to access a four wheeler, or $40,000 at a down payment, or 60 fatness, that is the criteria. I like that to change, because number one, a lot of the lands in Tobago, you don't have deed or any really accessible, you know, documents, right? And when you talk about 40, 60 fatners, you're talking about paying long for me to buy the road. The other problem, getting to and from their farms. And right now, the whole road gone. Mm. And if they fix and the rain come down, they will, they will have no road. They also raised concerns about the cocoa industry, the availability of land for farming, and the process of getting animals from breeding units. At the end of it all, the division assured that they're listening. We would have made note of all that was said here this evening. As I said, there were some issues that are, are not new issues. They have been around for many, many years. There are some suggestions we got, not a whole lot. There are some suggestions, like Mr. Nicholson talking about the, the CPEP or groups, forming groups to do spraying and so on and so on. I mean, those are ideas that we can explore, okay? So I am grateful for that kind of information. In fact, we are. Meetings like this one will take place in all eight agricultural districts throughout the island. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. 
But that's just one consultation happening on the island. Across in Goodwood, the land has already been earmarked and plans mapped out. But nothing will be done and made final without the input from the residents. Let's hear why from Omadara Mills. On evenings, many residents of Goodwood enjoy some kind of sporting activity on this field. And with no track or proper sporting facilities, the THA has proposed the construction of a multi-purpose sporting complex for the residents to enjoy. And they get to have a say in what they would like to see in the proposed complex, which in its first phase will cost approximately $2.5 million to construct. You have a lot of things for the younger folks, but what about the older ones? What about exercise machines and all those things around? Another resident is interested in the development of the sporting talents of the young people in the area. This was her suggestion on the way in which the THA can improve the design, which will have a refurbished hard court and upgrades to the present playing field. We have no sand pit and we have no throwing area at all on the field. So <clears throat> that in itself, because we don't exactly, the school is small, both schools are small. Although the residents appreciate the proposals and the construction of the pavilion, there's one who hopes that the THA will put plans in place to give them continuous updates during the construction phase. I would like to, to find out from or go to somebody, maybe, make some kind of arrangement with someone from the village to give us the fine-tuning details of what and what exactly need to be done on these these areas. The Assistant Secretary in the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, Jomo Pitt, under whose purview the construction of the sporting facilities come, has agreed to facilitate a liaison between the community and the THA during the construction period. Mr. Pitt also says that after construction, plans are in place for the security and the maintenance of the facilities. The facilities will have a pavilion with the capacity to hold 250 persons. It's proposed that a gym, storage and more toilets for the public also be included. Following the review, another consultation with the Goodwood residents is expected. I'm Omidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We've all heard that adage, when it rains, it pours, and Tobago has certainly experienced this. In fact, just a few weeks ago, incessant showers enveloped this island, destroying property and causing flooding in some areas. Now add to this mix changing weather patterns the world over, weather patterns that have caused the experts to warn that we must be prepared to deal with any natural disaster. But having this information is half the battle. What is Tobago doing to ensure this island is prepared? Here are some answers. The rainy season has unofficially started and within this short period there has been 82 reports of damage to public and private infrastructure, with nearly half of them being landslides involving residential property. Tima has had to respond, but the agency is doing more than risk assessments to the affected areas. We have provided temporary shelter for those persons who have been affected. We also have provided relief items to those persons who would have been in need of such. Mr. Stewart says that they are also working with other responders to assist those affected by the rains. Some of them required their areas to be of large amount of debris consisting of dirt uh, to be removed from their properties resulting out of these landslides. Um, so we are working on that along with... Um, agencies such as the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities. But Tima is not only responding to the current disasters. Since last year, the agency began its disaster sensitization program, mapping out the disaster zones in 20 communities around the island. With the distribution of the maps, the risk assessment program seeks to help families become more responsible for their lives and that of their property. Tima has also started another outreach and a sensitization program. Only last Wednesday, uh, a radio series program which is entitled the Rissland Radio Dialogue. 
dialogue, which is aimed at allowing our communities to be better engaged and reach a far, a far, with far more reaching effect where we can meet people in the comfort of their homes and communicate with them. With the addition of 40 technicians to the agency's cadre of responders, TIMA has more resources and the capabilities to deal with any disaster which may affect the communities during the season of rain. I'm Umidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but do stay with us. Coming up, we'll tell you that TT Connect Express is now a reality. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Welcome back to the Orange Hill Nature Ranch Goat Dairy and Organic Farm. The ownership of this place has changed hands many times and depending on who is in charge, so did the purpose. At some point, this was a location of a slave uprising, a sugar plantation, a coconut plantation, even a cow farm. And all that has somehow made way for what's here today, a goat dairy and organic farm. To the best of our knowledge, the only place that produces feta cheese in Tobago. But let's leave it there for now to tell you about a promise fulfilled. Last month, you heard about the plans to bring TT Connect Express to Tobago. This initiative is a mobile center which provides information about government and THA programs and services. It saves time and takes the hassle out of simple transactions. And it's now a reality on this island. It looks like this and will be of great benefit to persons in rural areas such as Plymouth and Roxborough. How? Well, all governments as well as Tobago House of Assembly services, such as applications for houses, YTEP or OJT, will be accessible from your backyard. I feel it's a wonderful idea and it will be, I think it should be well received in the village as well because it will allow the people within the community to come and access the information and I think it's a good idea to reach out to the people who cannot really go into town or to get, well, know where to go, what to get. This is the first time the service is in Tobago and head of TT Connect, Edison Eastman, says the discussion to have this service began last year. We started to have a discussion in terms of how can we ensure that the services that we offer within uh, Trinidad and the services which are available in the THA are made accessible to persons who live in not only in Bonacord, where the service centre is, but also in Roxborough, in Speyside, in Bethel, in Montgomery. He says one of the benefits of the service is that it's easy on the pocket. A person who is living in Roxborough need not travel to Victor E. Bruce building to have a service application made. And so that will cost, in terms of both time and money, a person can actually have a service applied for at the Express, at their residence, at their home. So once you see this bus roll into Speyside, Roxborough, Plymouth or Bethel, grab the opportunity. We stay here between, at, each, at each location. We work between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Discussions are ongoing with the THA and the Ministry of Science and Technology to have a bus developed by the Assembly stationed permanently in Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We heard from the youth representatives and the business sector, but this time the faith-based organizations got their turn to get involved in the conversation about decision-making and development. As Omadara Mills reports, many religious leaders came out to show that they're not out of touch with the issues affecting Tobago. Pentecostals, Adventists, Spiritual Baptists, Muslims and Moravians all came out to show that they are willing to work with the THA to strengthen Tobago's democratic process. The question of internal self-government for Tobago is a recommendation as a religious leader here this evening I'm going to make to any community that we need to pursue this and pursue it vigorously. Despite having varying religious backgrounds, many of the leaders believe they can come together to deal with changing and ultimately helping to manage Tobago's progress. It's a really great initiative that we could all sit down as a group speak to you, you know, we know what's happening right now in Tobago and so on. And what I would like to say is that after this meeting, we could collaborate, that the, the heads of major organizations could get together in some sort of committee. I could always report to you so that the numbers will be small, report to you and what's happening 
with your religious bodies. We could bring our concerns and, you know, so this could be better for Tobago. Whether it is health, education, agriculture or tourism, the religious bodies say they have leaders who are veterans in all these areas. The Bishop of El Bethel Spiritual Baptist Church, Muriel Dillon, says partnering with the THA will help with the creation of policies and improve the various sectors which contribute to the island's development. We have seen different problems in the society. And when we identify these problems of the churches to which we belong, can now implement uh, programs and uh, seek the intervention or the assistance of the assembly to bring these programs to fusion. In an effort to keep the enthusiasm going for these kinds of meetings, the religious organizations are being encouraged to submit proposals to the THA, meet in smaller forums and to be a part of a larger one. The assembly is meeting with the interest groups across Tobago to get their views on governance and development for this island. It's part of a promise made following the results of the January 2013 elections, which saw one party winning all seats. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. This is Honey, and she has been giving milk for feta cheese here at the dairy farm for the last 10 years. Now, the new school of thought is that as we grow older, we must be as involved as we were during our younger years. It's accepted that instead of slowing down, senior citizens should be engaged in physical as well as mentally stimulating activities. And here in Tobago, one club is ensuring that's exactly what happens. Davia Chambers reports. It was created as a space for the elderly to come together, to mingle, chat about the good old days, learn skills, and just merely enjoy their elderly days. There was a neighbor who was a member of this, this thing. She encouraged me to come and join. Came one day, I liked the things that is happening, and I just never turned back, and I never regret, never regret it. And that purpose has been fulfilled at the Night Nurse Elderly Activity Center in Roxborough for an entire year. I enjoy doing my work. I enjoy being with the ladies, because we talk, we laugh, we make jokes, and we get on very, very well when the day comes. Members of the club come from various areas, and according to ASP Hazel, the elderly derives many benefits just from being a part of this club. We were able to, uh, to develop this initiative in collaboration with the Division of Health and Social Services, who were very willing and supportive of the idea and was able to provide that financial support. Developing their skills is probably an understatement. The senior citizens even learned how to use a computer. It is an area where we can use their, uh, their leisure time in a productive way. And by all means, the whole idea of coming here, taking them away from loneliness, being at home alone, they are able now to develop their skills in terms of doing other things, meeting new friends, creating, learning new initiatives from time to time with their colleagues. But as they celebrate their first anniversary, the group wants one thing, to have more males join the activity centre. The next plan for the senior citizens? A cruise. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking another break, but on the other side, Kazakh, Frock and Suspenders. We'll explain when we return. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Welcome back and thanks for joining us at Orange Hill Nature Ranch, Go Dairy and Organic Farm. Today we know this place as a producer of feta cheese and yogurt. The owner also rears goats and the company collects and bags manure. But this place was almost claimed by a hurricane in the late 1880s. The estate lost most of its produce with few crops surviving. Today, what we see here also weathered bankruptcy. But we'll leave these agricultural details behind, journey to the catwalk. This event is actually in its third year, and as has happened in the past, the organizers are incorporating local dialect to tell their story. With emerging Tobagonian designers Cassie Daniel, Lydia Arnold, 
and Juliet Bernard to the more established Dahlia Allen. Lower Scarborough transformed, style and a runway built from the Barcode Lounge out to Milford Road. This for Tobago Fashion Weekend 2013 under the theme Kazakh, Frock and Suspenders. It's the third year that Tobago has had its own fashion weekend by a Tobago company. But for many reasons, Designers United Stores, the company which owns Tobago Fashion Weekend, was not able to have a launch. This year, they did. The work we do is not for ourselves, but for you. It, gives, it is to give you the opportunities and outlets to be creative, to be the best you can be without any restrictions or limitations. Designers United Stores for the past three years has embarked on a holistic approach to the development of the fashion industry in Tobago. She says there's a need for that development because talent in Tobago is in abundance. However, there is a need to hold that, hone that talent and creativity in a tangible way to create fashion and fashion related products that translate into commerce for the country and its individual. About 40 designers will showcase their clothing over the weekend May 17th to 19th, 2013. The fashion industry is a multi-billion dollar one worldwide and has significant effects on a country's economy. It's a part of the reason the Tobago House of Assembly has invested significantly in this project. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. That's what's to come. Now let's share with you another night of fashion from an unrelated event. Actually, this one takes us to the poolside of the Magdalena Grand Beach Resort and showcases what a holiday in Tobago looks like. It was a soiree, showcasing Tobago as the resort island it is, through fashion, Tobago Fashion Coda. Patrons got to see the likes of many resort designers with their airy, multicolored clothing and swimwear, a must-have for the capital of paradise. Peter Elias. Monique Nobrega. Heather Jones. House of Jaipu. Our very own Delia Allen and others. Producer Don Grant says the event turned out to be a successful one and hopefully the start to Tobago being recognized as the go-to place for fashion and entertainment. Clearly, Tobago has the potential to put something of this nature on. Let's face the fact, we're beautiful. We're beautiful in Tobago, our island is beautiful, our people is beautiful, and we're proud of that be the beauty that we have. So how better could it be to show it on a fun fill, full moon evening here at the Magdalena Grand in Tobago? But Don alone did not walk away pleased. The Tobago Fashion Coda Show was quite an experience for me. Um, what I liked about it is that it featured a wide range of fashion designers from Trinidad and Tobago. And um, each designer reflected their own style, their own aesthetic, and the audience was able to you know, enjoy or get a taste of what each designer showcase had to offer. I think it was a fashion show, it's a difference for Tobago. Uh, the first ever fashion show like this and I think it's something that we should keep doing annually. Uh, and it was a good experience for the models as well as the designers, both local and international. And the show was a pretty successful one. The evening ended with live performances. Tobago Fashion Coda was sponsored by the Tourism Division as well as the Division of Community Development and Culture. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. 
And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. This week, we're asking about the SEA exams. Our students spend years preparing for this, and for many, the results are a game changer. It's also the beginning of their secondary school journey, but it's a stressful time for all. So we wanted to know what can parents do to help improve the performance of their children at SEA. This is what you said. The children of the day after is a, is a different generation coming up. So we must try to educate them, you know, as much as possible so that they would not, you know, stray. You know, evenings, you help them with their lessons and so on, you know? Well, a parent could, you know, spend some more time with the kids, I guess, you know, and help them along with the performance in the work that they do in school and other extracurricular activities. For me, just to continue assisting them, helping them stay calm, focus, pray, and just being there 100% all the way with them. And that's about it. I think parents should let the children them relax within two days before the exam, before they go and face the course. My, my nephew did the, the test yesterday and he said he was trembling, you know, he was shaking them. So I tell him, well, you have a right to relax and then attempt the questions. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Do remember you can send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and add us to your YouTube playlist. I'm Colleen Holden on behalf of all of us at the Department of Information. Have a safe and enjoyable week.